Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not The Mouse, the podcast all about animation not made by the mouse. I'm your host, Octaviano Macias, and today, you know, when it comes to animation sequels, I think the king of them is DreamWorks. Of course, there's been a lot of studios that have made sequels, Disney, Pixar, Blue Sky, I just named a bunch of stuff that Disney owns, Illumination, but to me, I think DreamWorks usually does it best. And this isn't to say that they're the ones who have only made good ones. Like, you know, I don't want people thinking that I'm out here calling out any other specific studio as crap. Uh, but I do think that they're consistently going interesting to interesting places with their sequels. Uh, even if they aren't, aren't all great, like... Yeah, you know, you go to Pixar and you know you got Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, both incredible sequels. And there's even some other ones that I do like from them. But I don't know, it, to me it's just like DreamWorks, I don't know if it's because they're more open to the idea of sequels that they always kind of open their movies to them. Because, you know, with a lot of Disney ones, they're not really open to them. Or it's just something else entirely. But consistently, I'm like, even their weaker ones tend to have something interesting in them there there are some that i don't think uh quite hit the high of um their usual stuff but for the most part i i, I do like their stuff even though i've never talked about the first movie and i'll probably do that at some point uh you know it, it's not something that uh, is too high on my list i figured uh, you know what let's just skip ahead i'll talk about trolls 2 So with Trolls 2, there's a lot to enjoy. Uh, just to be clear, the first Trolls movie was just, to me, a, a very forgettable, um, average, decent animated feature. Like, the animation in it, great. Very trippy. And on that front, I, I give him high marks. But the movie itself, from what I remember, was just like, okay, so here's some pop songs. Here's a basic uh, rescue story about, you know, trolls trying to rescue their people and there's a bit of a I, I guess you could say like a racial vibe to it because there's these creatures that are eating them and eventually it's all about you know teaching those creatures like you know hey we're people too or something like that I, I you know it, it's whatever it's nothing incredible nothing great um there are a few moments that i remember were kind of like oh i you know that's kind of cool to do um but we're not here to talk about that one today uh, Trolls 2 on the other hand is just a massive step up like the animation is even better than the last one but it also just fully digs in on the whole racial themes the cultural themes it makes the whole movie actually about something and while the message of course has its well I wouldn't say its flaws but the way it's delivered is kind of like okay that's a little confusing given how, you know, for example, like the main characters are like the pop trolls and you, you kind of realize like, wait a second, you know, they eventually started producing like, you know, like K-pop trolls and uh, uh, reggaeton trolls and stuff like that. And it's like, shouldn't some of that music kind of fall under you know some of that stuff? Because like, you know, there's even like a scene where the characters are doing like a montage of like the greatest pop songs and they even include like Gundam Style, which I'm like, wait, wouldn't that kind of fall under k-pop if i'm not mistaken um but i, I don't know it, it's definitely just minor stuff that you can just chalk up to like look that's not really the focus that's just a little thing that's kind of a, a gag it's because it, because the thing is that the movie um is full-on absurd humor it, it's very much like the kind of stuff that you would see like and um like classic cartoons stuff like like looney tunes and whatnot where it's like a lot of it is just meant to be I want to say fourth wall breaking, but it, it's to a point where it's like it, it could be, and there's not really a, like a, a sound logic to a lot of it. You just kind of go with it. So 
on that front, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and realistically, it doesn't even hurt uh, the messages of the movies. It's just one of those things where if you sit down and think about it, it starts to be like, wait a second, that doesn't add up to this. But at the very least, the heart of the message is unaffected by it, which is great to me because the problem with a lot of animated movies that do like the whole racial thing is that you you have to do these things you know so simple you know for kids to understand because a lot of these are targeted for kids that it results in the movie kind of creating issues like not that i hate like zootopia i think it's a fine movie but you know some of that some of the messages in it get kind of confusing because you you kind of get confused like wait a second is this supposed to be a racial message or is this supposed to be a, a, a female like you know a sexism message because you'll have stuff like okay judy hops the main character uh of zootopia just to be clear i'm talking about that just to give me an idea um she's treated like she can't be a cop because she's a rabbit and rabbits aren't strong creatures i guess and they're small and whatnot and it's like okay so that sounds like a whole you know woman in the police force kind of thing a little weird because you do see female female cops in it but you know we'll ignore that for a bit um and then there's stuff about her basically saying like oh you can't call a bunny cute bunny um yeah you can't call a bunny cute because that's kind of offensive so it's like okay so now we're treating that like a slur so now it's like a racial thing and it, it gets confused and that's not even touching the, the whole of it there's a lot of stuff that people have talked about and it doesn't ruin the message in that movie but it also just doesn't help i feel like in in those terms trolls 2 trolls world tour is much it, it's much better like it, it it is a lot more consistent and more clear to where, like, yeah, even, like, the parts where they have fault are easily ignorable. Like, you can just get by with it, no problem. Just to give you a quick idea. So, yeah, the movie is called Trolls World Tour. Uh, the movie deals with how this um, rock troll, uh, Queen Barb, is basically going around. Essentially, it's, like, the whole Infinity War Thanos thing where it's, like, they had to collect, like, certain things from every area in this case it's like strings of each um nation's um music because basically you have like the main nations which are pop trolls that's the main one we follow the rock trolls the classical trolls the techno trolls the country trolls and the funk trolls so again it's, it's the infinity war thing uh the general idea is that each string is what produces the music of each type of troll and if you can control all of them, you can control music. So the rock troll is pretty much like, you know, I want everything to be rock, which I, I kind of like the, the fact that they made the rock troll the, the villain here just because, you know, as a fan of rock and knowing people who are fans of it, it's probably the, the music genre that you get the most people out of it that are pretty much like, you know, other forms of music are crap or... Um, you know, like, it's even been done to death, you know, if we're being honest, like, the whole stereotype of, like, the, the rocker who sees everything, all of their music is beneath uh, rock. That, I think, was, was kind of a cool choice. So, basically, she's on her way doing that. And early on, uh, Poppy, the, the queen of the, the pop trolls, um, voiced by, by Anna Krandrek, is pretty much like, okay... You know, she just wants to unite us, so that's a good thing. Um, her love interest and the co-star, Branch, voiced by um, Justin Timberlake, uh, questions more on this. Because Branch is pretty much like, look, I don't think that she's trying to be friendly. Which it turns out that, of course, yeah, she's not trying to be friendly. And, and that's another thing about the movie is that it's pretty much also a story about listening to your friends and whatnot whatever it doesn't find it, it you know it, it lends itself well to its main message of of cultural um differences and stuff like that basically they go on this quest uh poppy initially takes the, the her string to present it to barb and it soon becomes clear like okay she's not out to just you know befriend everyone she's trying to 
forcefully take all these things to force everyone into rock. So it becomes a whole journey about these characters, you know, of course, learning about themselves and just trying to figure out how they can unite trolls um, again, which the movie at some point points out, like, especially once they meet the the funk trolls who basically they, they do like a retcon because like one of the characters from the last movie um, is revealed to be a funk troll. Uh, he wasn't aware of it because basically he was um, lost and found by the pop trolls. Basically, um, you know, he's, it's the four-legged um, uh, troll, the, the most different looking one of the bunch, if we're being honest. So that was kind of a neat uh, change to it. And they're quick to point out like, okay, yeah, he's actually a funk troll. Um, and the funk trolls do want to help um, Poppy, but they're quick to point out like, okay, we want to help you. But at the same time, we don't want um to unite the strings because we know what happened and it's an interesting thing where they reveal um the backstory and it's pretty much the whole thing where it's like yeah it turns out that um even though like the the father had initially told poppy that the whole move like basically the whole reason why they're separated was because their music got so different that they each decided to go their separate ways the funk trolls are quick to point out like okay you're, and it's kind of a, like, you know, like, of course, like an actual thing that people would say, but done more cutesy to reflect this, this movie, um, where it's like, oh, your, um, picture book or whatever is just glued together from the winners or something like that. And it's playing like, look, Pop Trolls actually came in, they took the strings, they were pretty much doing like remixes, covers, all this stuff on a bunch of different music. And was they were turning it into pop uh, music? Pretty much, they were forcing pop down everyone's throats to the point that they were pretty much zombifying es- essentially everyone to be pop. So like the, the the elders of the of the other music pretty much came and stole their strings and just decided to go their separate ways, uh, essentially revealing that the main characters that we've been following are descendants of essentially a, a bad person which is great it, it, it's basically again a great little me- metaphor for like you know c- culture diversity and all that where it's like yeah you guys cause a lot of problems and you know you've been sanitizing your history to the point that it's seen as this cute little thing that acknowledges a bad thing happened but doesn't acknowledge your part in it which is true to a lot of society. And I like the fact that it also works as a as a metaphor for, like, the way... Well, I don't know if I'd say metaphor, but pretty much, like, it's a commentary on also music because there is a lot of pop co- covers and remixes of stuff that wasn't pop, which is not necessarily bad, but it is funny to consider, like, hey, you know, with the amount that it is done, more so than, you know, the other genres of music, at least from a certain perspective, isn't it kind of, like, you're trying to force it down even though you're you know not um not thinking of it as, as that way so it ends up being a great way to uh combine that with the whole thing about you know cultural appropriation and you know it's acknowledging look we respect what you do but at the same time we want our music to stay the same because we want our identity to be seen because that, that's one of the great things about the movie is that whereas a lot of racial stories for kids and even some for adults um tend to go with the whole hey you know we're all the same at the end of the day this one's proud to announce like no we're we're not all the same and that's okay we have our own things we have our own lives we have our own stories to tell and we should be allowed to embrace those sides of us instead of having to try to clean it up to be like that other thing that that you are which, again, I, I think it's a great way to handle that. And the movie itself is all the better for it. Because, you know, even if it didn't have that stuff, it, it would still at least be a really funny movie. There's a lot of absurd humor. This one, I think, gets a lot funnier than the the first one does because they fully 
delve in on just the weirdness of it like things like you know like a pinky promise or a high five are turned into like these epic acts a lot of things are just alive in this like you know you, you get tears crying like you know a person will cry out tears and then that tear will cry out more tears or like there, there's a you know like I, I mentioned earlier there's a scene where they sing like a Gundam style and they and that whole scene is basically them singing like a pop's greatest hits to try to convince the country trolls to join their side and it doesn't go well because they're like dude this is annoying shit and you know it, it's it's funny because a lot of people i remember when this came out would use that clip as an example of why the movie was bad and i'm like you realize that in context the whole point of the that scene is that they're they're being annoying right like at the very least if you're going to complain about something at least know the context behind it you don't have to like it but at the very least understand that that's what's going on so you saying that it's annoying is like well yeah that that's the point but you know it, it, what's funny about it is that by the end of it no one's of course uh, impressed by it but you even see like a, a tumbleweed go by and if you pay attention you notice that it tells them um, that they suck which is something that I didn't catch the first time I saw it where I just thought that it was just some random troll in the background that we weren't seeing, just saying you suck. But then if you actually pay attention to Tumbleweed, you actually notice it has a little mouth that goes wide. So stuff like that is great. And on that front, like, you know, even if you're not noticing the racial stuff, which if you don't notice that you're probably got to, you know, you're probably a little kid who's too young to understand this stuff because it's beating you over the head with it, but in a good way. It still has plenty to offer. That's that's fun. Like I, I mentioned before, the animation is great. I would say... Because basically what, what the animation is done like, it's kind of like a, a craft... Um, like a homemade craft kind of movie. Like, it's definitely more advanced than, you know, just you know someone who just puts googly eyes on a paper cup or or whatever but it, it kind of feels like it would be right at home with that like i don't i don't know how many of you have ever played like the game um uh, the yoshi's crafted world game but it, it reminds me a lot of that where a lot of it just feels like something that someone just glued together because it's like you'll get like liquid having like this weird look to it where it doesn't look like actual like for example with the lava a lot of the stuff that pops up it looks like like pieces of paper painted that way uh some of the, the liquid i noticed look kind of like gel that someone would find like at a store or even um just like clay uh even some of the movie uh, mo movement can be a little choppy to reflect that but in a good you know like in a way that actually fits with what they're doing like at, at some point when they head into like the classical troll village there's um after destruction like the one of the few things that survive is like this little uh penny whistle and the way it's moving is like you know like it's they can like i said it's very choppy but but it works it's like it, it makes it look kind of like stop motion but yeah like it, it's to a point where it's like i don't know what nintendo is planning to do with um with their movies if they're just gonna go with illumination or with other companies and by the way i'll have to talk about that mario movie soon with nintendo like if they're open to doing you know different companies from universal i, I would say like if they do that Yoshi thing, you know, maybe do it with with these guys just because they they really do nail that look of like, you know, just having like an arts and crafts world. Just like the texture of that. Like even the characters themselves are very fuzzy, almost like they, they're made out of felt. I, I don't know. I, I, I really do dig that that look. It's a very different. Like it, it looks like a standard CG movie until you actually start paying attention to it. And it, 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 that's where it really shines. And this was true even in the first one, but this one takes it to a whole different level that it, it just, I, I don't know, like it, it really does pop out a lot more to me. And it's just a visual feast, especially because, you know, like I said, it's it's a very trippy looking movie. Like it, this, you could turn off the audio in this and you could probably still follow along the story pretty well, but it would still be just impressive to watch just because... Of how much detail the animation is going through it's just fun like you know a lot of the animation you know is built around just creating creating great gags or just very fun things to watch like you know it, it is a very fun movie just to look at and it, you know even on that front i could just recommend it to you just because 
it's just a, an incredible piece. I don't, I don't know. I, th- I think more movies could benefit from, you know, looking at something like this and seeing, like, how they go about, you know, creating their world. Because, look, I'm, I'm not against, you know, CG doing its own thing. And, of course, things are changing now because of Spider-Verse, Puss in Boots, and whatnot. But it is nice to see when a movie um, creates a world based around their aesthetic in the case of like spider Verse, so it was like okay since it was a comic book movie a lot of it looked like a comic book um with this one since it's like okay so this is going to be like a cute musical kind of thing for kids it's based off the trolls toys even though yeah the trolls here look way more creative and cute than the actual troll dolls it, it's pretty clear that like okay the mindset was like since it's going to be like a musical it's going to be like this we're going to make the world look like something that would fit that that style and I would like to see more movies go with that, where they choose a specific style uh, to fit it. This was a lot easier with 2D, where you could have made worlds look more like, you know, like like uh, simple storybooks, or sometimes you could have done something more action-based. CG, I think, is barely coming to a point where that's becoming a little more natural, but we still got a way to go. And yeah, this is definitely one where I'm like, yeah, you've want some inspiration for something where it looks like a homemade very detailed but uh, like a homemade kind of art uh piece this is it music wise i will say it's not the greatest um suit in this like not that anyone's bad at singing everyone's you know good at singing in this and you know there are some fun songs in here but it, since it's mostly it's, it's pretty much a jukebox musical so a lot of it does come down to just them covering other people's songs um it results in like okay this is fun to listen to for a while but at the end of the day i'm gonna be going back to the the the, the music the like the original song of those um and again not that they, they necessarily do anything bad with it i you know if i call it like you know like the movie's weak aspect it's less because that, you know, anyone does bad on it. It's just that whereas so much of it stands out as uniquely this movie. Um, because, like I said, since it's a, ju- a jukebox musical, I um, feel like a lot of the stuff that stands out from the music doesn't exactly stand out over, like, the original versions. Like, they do, like, a, a cover of Girls Wanna Have Fun that started the movie as Trolls ha- Still Wanna Have Fun. Anna Kendrick is nice at singing it, and I do like how they eventually start doing a medley of other um, songs in there. But at the same time, it, it just makes me think, like, okay, I should go listen to those songs again. Um, there's um, covers of, like, Crazy Train, Barracuda, and whatnot. Again, not bad. It, you know, it definitely works well with the animation they're doing, and... The people who are singing are good at singing, so it's fun to listen to in that regard. It just doesn't fully stand out. Um, and look, they even have like an original song at the end of the movie where, you know, all the trolls come together and realize that, you know, their differences are great and whatnot. That song is great. But, you know, it's not enough for me to... Uh, really highly recommend the music and i'm sure that's more so on me just because again a lot of these songs are songs that i've heard so i'm more interested in listening to the original versions um that they're covering uh but i imagine that if you're a young kid or if you've never heard these songs before you'll probably fall in love with this these versions more so it's probably just more of a thing on which version you hear first not a knock on uh, on the movie it's just you know, my personal thing on like, okay, you know, that's one part that just kind of goes out, out the ear, I guess, if you want to put it that way for me, but uh, on the whole fun movie, a lot of great humor in it. There's, you know, I don't, I don't want to give away like, you know, specific gags, but I, I do think that there's quite a few that will make, um, adults, uh, laugh as well. It's not just stuff that's aimed for kids. Like there's a whole thing early on where the two main characters, um, branch of poppy, um, like Branch is the one that's more open to like the idea of them having a relationship um, than she is. Like she seems kind of oblivious to the idea. So as he's trying to explain it to her, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where he gets like, you know, essentially friend zone. Like, like she tells him like he's a great friend or something like that. And, you know, you have this whole kind of breakdown with Branch. Um, as he's doing it, I, I don't want to explain how it, how exactly it comes off, but it, I thought it was a really funny 
thing. So you get stuff like that. Again, on the whole, really fun movie if you're a fan of animation just because the animation is great in it. But even uh, uh, beyond that level, I do think that it has a great story in it. I love the themes in it, the way it handles its messages. I love the fact that it does it way better than a lot of other people do. And it, to me, the fact that it was such a big step up from the first movie in those regards is why I love DreamWorks uh, when it comes to their sequels. Because a lot of their movies do wisely expand on their world. Like, this could have easily just been, okay, here's the trolls on another adventure. Here's another race of creatures that are trying to eat them or something like that. But instead, they were like, no, let's actually have the, the trolls talk about their lore. Let's have them... Um, explore like different types of music since we mostly focus on pop in the first one let's have the trolls actually acknowledge this stuff and you know let's make it about something and it, it just makes it all the better um i'm hoping that the upcoming third movie um uh, does something interesting with with them too but even if it doesn't i'm just glad that this movie exists and it's just such a good way to showcase, like, yes, this company knows what they're doing when it comes to the sequels. And I, I just love them for it. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again next time. You suck! Thank you for coming on today. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel where you'll see video versions of these podcasts. And if you just want to listen to them, there's always the option of just following the podcast on their various sites, whether it's Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. Whatever you choose, I hope you continue enjoying these. And if you want to support me even further than that, there's always the option of Patreon. With Patreon, even just a dollar will get your name on the video versions of this and on other videos that I may do outside of these podcasts. A few dollars more gets you some behind the scenes info, and as this continues to grow, you'll find that there's more perks to it. So I hope you consider supporting me through Patreon as well. And in any case, again, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.